Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of domain and range of exponential functions. This is standard A.9a in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 21 of the 2017 released star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have the population of a city and it's modeled by an exponential function. So what do we mean by that? Well, that means that we are going to uh, typically see something that looks like this. A times B to the X power where X is the number of years after 2015. All right, so we've got that graph right there. And we need to find the inequality that best represents the range. Now, we've seen range in a multitude of different type of functions, linear functions, quadratic functions. Now we're dealing with the range of exponential functions. And so when we're dealing with range, we typically will pair it up with this other term, domain. And unfortunately, neither term is actually defined for us on our mathematics chart. So we need to go ahead and make sure we have a firm understanding of what the domain and the range is. And then in this case, we are simply looking at the range. So the domain is the set of all possible independent variable values. And so our shorthand for that is going to be our x values or our x coordinates. And so those are our independent variables, right? So we start with the x, we do something to it, multiply it, divide it, whatever, and we end up with a y. So our y is going to be our dependent. That's our range, set of all possible dependent variable values. Now, in this case, it happens to be x and y. That's fine. But this is the one that kind of changes sometimes. Really, that's why we say it's not just the y values. It's the dependent variable values. Because sometimes it's y. Sometimes it's f of x. Uh, sometimes it's g of x, h of x, anything of x to show that it's a function. So it doesn't have to just be y. But that's kind of our shorthand. y values, x values. So looking at this graph, right? the y values are our vertical values. Uh, that's what we're looking for right here. So this is our domain. And this is our range. All right, so what do we see about this thing here? Well, we see that the range starts right here. Looks like it's a hair above uh, halfway. Actually, they, they say I'm seeing 250, 250, so they're going to call it halfway. That's fine. Okay. So it's going to be a hair above halfway, and it's just going to get greater, right? So first off, our range needs to be y is greater than. And they don't show an open or a closed circle. Um, but we, we need to go ahead and assume that it's a closed circle, because in real life, you can't have a zero population. That means we we include the zero. So rather than just greater than, it's going to be greater than or equal to, and then, right, that 250,000. Because it starts at that 250,000, never gets below, it just goes up after that, and it just goes up. So that's our range, right? So we see that right here for B. Uh, so what, what, is the, what are some of these options? Well, X is greater than or equal to zero. That is actually your domain, right? Because you're we're just looking at the x values here. That would be the x is greater than or equal to 0. That's the domain, not the range. So that's just looking at the wrong set of values. And then x is between 0 and 110. So that would be another type of domain if it stopped, but it's not going to stop because that arrow says it goes on forever. And then same thing with this. This is assuming it's bound between the 250 and the uh, 1 million, but that's just where the graph stops. That arrow up at the top means that it continues past that. So you can't say that you've got these boundaries here. That's no good. So our answer here is B.